After being on the top of the world after winning a BCS national championship, to becoming a third string in the NFL, Jameis has had a heck of a journey. So in this video, let's talk about the story of the Crab Leg King and Jameis Winston. And Winston's pass, and into the end zone, touchdown, Mike Evans. Jameis was born in the heart of the South in Bessemer, Alabama, a little old town smack dab in the middle of the South, with a population of 27,000 and full of a bunch of hardworking people. From the beginning, Jameis was dialed in, and not only did he dominate high school football, but also baseball, and at Hueytown High School, he rose the ranks to become one of the highest recruits in the nation. Throughout his four years at quarterback, Jameis passed for over 6,800 yards and 67 touchdowns with only 25 picks. Solid stats, but the 25 interceptions are an alarming stat and seemingly foreshadow his future. Anyways, Jameis was one of the top recruits, and as a result, he participated in the 2011 Elite 11 camp and was the co-MVP with former BYU quarterback Taylor Magnum. Interestingly enough, Tanner was the backup to Taysom Hill at BYU. Hmm, sounds kind of familiar. <laughs> well anyways, Jameis was becoming a star and a super high recruit. That same year, Jameis was the Gatorade Player of the Year in Alabama as he led Hueytown to a state title in his senior season. With all the success Jameis had in his senior year, it's not much of a surprise that he was the number one ranked dual threat quarterback in his class and he had interest from schools like Stanford, Auburn, LSU, Alabama, and the school where he ended up becoming a star in Florida State. What's interesting in the decision is the fact that he was legitimately recruited by Alabama, but instead chose Florida State, and the rest is history. Play action for Winston. Lobs it, looking, Enzo. Catch is made, fought for, it is a touchdown. Not only did James commit to Florida State for football, but he also was a great baseball player, and was even drafted in the 2012 MLB draft to the Texas Rangers. Although Jameis had the chance in the majors, like many other players in the same situation, he chose football. No, don't pull, no. Ah! Although Jameis didn't play his freshman year, he was able to learn behind another Florida State star dual threat quarterback in EJ Manuel. The following year, as EJ left for the NFL, Jameis was named the starter, and as a sophomore, he took full advantage. Jameis led Florida State to a 13-0 record and continued the dominance into the ACC Championship, where Florida State killed Duke 45-7. 2013 was back before the whole college football playoff, so Florida State went straight into the BCS natty against the Cam Newton-led Auburn Tigers. In the back and forth shootout, Jameis beat Super Cam and won the natty on his 20th birthday. Not only did Jameis just win a natty, but he also beat out Johnny Manziel for the Heisman Trophy. And the winner is... Jameis Winston, Florida State University. That season, Jameis passed for over 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns and was just flat out on the top of the college football world. Although many would go straight to the league, Jameis decided to come back his sophomore season and once again he led Florida State to a 13-0 record. Now this is where it gets interesting because in 2014 he regressed quite a bit and although he passed for over 3,900 yards and 25 touchdowns, he had 18 picks and seemingly struggled on the biggest stage. After barely beating Georgia Tech in the ACC Championship 37-35, Florida State went up against Oregon in the college football playoff semifinal, and dang. To see tempo. Fake it to Freeman. Pump fake. Running free again is Carrington. Sidesteps a man and scores. Although you would think the experience from winning a national championship the previous year would pay off, it didn't help Florida State at all, as they lost 59-20. Crazy enough, the loss to Oregon is Jameis' sole loss in all of college football. That season, although underwhelming, earned Jameis the 6th place spot in the Heisman voting and led him to declare for the NFL Draft. Although Jameis was coming off of a disappointing end to his college career, he was one of the highest rated prospects in the draft and as a result was selected first overall by the Bucks. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Jameis Winston. Luckily for Jameis, he didn't have to move far and only had to drive a few minutes down to Tampa Bay. From the get-go, Jameis looked solid as he passed for over 4,000 yards and 22 touchdowns. But once again, the interceptions were apparent, as his 15 picks were a little sus. Even though Jameis struggled with interceptions, he was still able to make the Pro Bowl, as Brady skipped it for one of his 10 Super Bowls. 2016 was more the same for Jameis, as once again he passed for over 4,000 yards, and this time 28 touchdowns to go along with 18 picks. Still a decent amount of interceptions, but anyway, Jameis was on the rise. The following year was great for Jameis until week 6 when he injured his right shoulder against the Cardinals. Thankfully the injury was not too bad, 
and Jameis only missed three games as he still passed for over 3,500 yards and 19 touchdowns to 11 interceptions. There's a reoccurring theme for Jameis with the Bucks as he continually passed for a solid chunk of interceptions to go along with a plethora of yards and a decent bit of touchdowns. That season was the start of the problems with Jameis. Not only did Jameis have an interception problem, but off the field there were some issues. That season was the start of the problems off the field with Jameis, and against the Saints, Mike Evans and Jameis got into a little brawl with Saints rookie quarterback Marshawn Lattimore. The scuffle ended up costing Jameis over $12,000, which is practically the equivalent of a parking ticket for someone who has tens of millions of dollars. White people, white people, white people. Following the fight, Jameis stayed out of trouble until the following season where he was suspended three games by the NFL after allegedly groping a female Uber driver. Following all this and his underwhelming play, 2018 was his first year after his rookie deal, and instead of getting a big payday, the Bucks picked up his fifth year option in order to refrain from giving him some moolah. That season was the start of Jameis' decline, and although he had nearly 3,000 yards in only 13 games, his 14 interceptions to only 19 touchdowns were extremely worrisome. Going into 2019, the Bucks had a new head coach in Bruce Arians, and many speculated it might be the end for Jameis in Tampa. With the talk surrounding his time in the Bay, it was up to Jameis as to whether or not he would stay or leave. That season was insane for Winston as he passed for over 5,100 yards and 33 touchdowns, but the problem manifested itself once again as his 30 interceptions was just too much for Bruce to handle as he lost his job to the GOAT in Tom Brady. That's tough. After starting off his career with all the hope in the world, Jameis was without a job and a free agent following a 5,000 yard passing season. Even though Jameis passed for an insane amount of yards, his interceptions kept many teams from picking him up until a divisional rival in the New Orleans Saints took a chance on Jameis. It wasn't too big of a chance as Jameis only signed a one-year $1.1 million deal as he became the backup to Breeze and the Mormon Miracle in Taysom Hill. Sound familiar? Although Jameis was a third string, he was able to pass for over 100 yards and had a crazy trick play to Traquan Smith against his alma mater in Tampa Bay. With Drew Brees retiring, Jameis has a shot to take over the Saints offense and there's likely a quarterback battle on the horizon between him and Taysom Hill that will determine what's next for the Crab King. Yeah, how, how, I'm, again. how I'm supposed to handle like if, if I just got him for free? Jameis signed a one-year deal worth $12 million, so it seems like the Saints have much more faith in Jameis this year in what may be his last chance to start in the NFL. I guess we will just have to wait and see. Guys, we didn't come here for no reason. I say, guys, this is ours, man. Thanks for watching my story of video on the Crab Lake King and Jameis Winston. If you enjoyed, subscribe, like, and comment what videos you want me to make next. But anyway, see you guys soon, and peace out.